Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Amber Valley series. There are 35 parishes in this beautiful slice of eastern Derbyshire. Here's one for your viewing pleasure. Welcome back to Amber Valley everybody and since making the Ironville episode just a, an hour or so ago the rain seems to have stopped which is a good thing there is a little bit of moisture still in the air but uh, I'm still wearing the coat so if it does come down heavy I'm prepared now in the Ironville episode we saw a place called Codner Park well this is Codner Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Here we go again in Amber Valley, this time with the village of Codna, a place which could almost be a small town. Located right next to Ripley, with which it forms a continuous urban area, Codna has been a major crossroads for over a thousand years. Roads meet on its marketplace from Ripley, Alfreton, Langley Mill and Hena. The village itself probably dates back to Saxon times and it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book as Cotnovra. Codna has a ridiculous amount of history. It's so much more than just an extended piece of Ripley. For a start, look no further than Codna Castle, a 13th century Mott and Bailey ruin which stands in a field to the east of the village, although be aware it's not actually in Codna. The village was another in a Derbyshire mining area. There were at least two, if not three, pits close to Codna, and the men who were lost here while doing their jobs are commemorated by way of one of the biggest mining wheel memorials I've ever seen. Codna had trams too, the Ripley Rattlers they were called, and it was the most dangerous tram service in Britain, owing to the gradients it had to deal with between here and Nottingham. This one was also the birthplace of a famous phrenologist, Joseph Millet Seven, who wrote a book about his home village, and a lot of the information in this episode comes from that very publication. Well, let's get walking and see what he wrote, shall we? Let's go. We start with a drive around Codner Gate Industrial Estate to the north of the village. The name Codner Gate most likely originates from two former toll gates on a turnpike road which once passed through Codner from Cromford to Langley Mill. It was 13 miles long and had several main and side gates along its length for collecting tolls. That turnpike road is what we now know today as the modern A610 which connects Ripley to Nottingham. This is High Holborn Road, named after High Holborn Wood. Between that wood and Codnergate Farm was once an expanse of fields, often used for local community events. Those fields and that wood are now covered by this industrial estate. A branch line of the Midland Railway once passed over Codnergate via what was known locally as the Iron Bridge in inverted commas. It was demolished in 1969. Also now demolished is the Gate Inn, a once popular local pub which took its name from Codner Gate. Our main walk starts on Glasshouse Hill. This is the A610 and it runs all the way through Codner, carrying a vast amount of traffic. 
The first landmark is a Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall on the corner of Stirling Street, which is at the foot of a shallow hill. Part way up that hill we find a bus stop. The only service to stop here is the Rainbow One, which runs between Nottingham and Alfreton. Glasshouse Hill Care Home is next. This is run by Voyage Care and it's a rehab centre for just 11 patients, all with brain injuries. Even though it's all the same road, Glasshouse Hill eventually becomes Codner High Street and soon we're hitting the shops. Mind you, not all of them are open. This one, for example, is an old shop according to its nameplate. I wonder what it's sold. 100% still in business though is this large block of shops including a Tesco Express and Codner Fish Bar, the local chippy. Codner's not short of a few things and it appears to have a lot of independent retailers. It's not massively overrun by chain stores. Even though it's a village, it has enough to be a small town. You'll see what I mean when we approach the high street from the other direction later. As you hit the marketplace, you'll find this newly planted tree, placed here for the coronation of King Charles III back in May. Now in the car park, in front of that tree, you'll find this information board about Codner Castle. Here's the thing though, Codner Castle is not actually in Codner. It actually falls within the boundaries of Oldercar and Langley Mill. If you don't believe me? Check it. Trust me, it's not in Codner. And I can't actually get to it anyway because uh, my plan was to drive to that from Ironville, but as we saw, the road was a private road in last week's episode. So, do I cover it in this episode? Do I really need to talk about Codner Castle? Well, I think I do, but just be aware that it's not actually in Codner. It's a very historic building though. Here comes today's special section. Codner Castle isn't the easiest thing to get to. You can't drive to it, so instead walking is the only option. But be aware, it's on private land and can only be viewed from a nearby footpath. Although called Codner Castle, access to it is actually easier from Aldercar. The castle dates back centuries. The crumbling remains that stand today date from the 13th century when it was held by the powerful de Grey family, but it stands on the older remains of a Norman Mott and Bailey castle. In 1211 it was owned by Henry de Grey, a descendant of the Norman knight Antichil de Greyer. His descendants include the long line of Lords Grey of Codner, Lady Jane Grey, the infamous Nine Day Queen, and the extinct families of the Dukes of Suffolk and Kent. The castle made national news in 2007 when Channel 4's Time Team carried out an archaeological dig which found a perfectly preserved gold noble of Henry V in its moat. It's now on display at the Derby Museum and Art Gallery. As the name suggests, Codner did indeed once have a market. It was held on Saturdays up to and including the mid-1800s. The marketplace name now is more associated with the stretch of the A610 between Hena Road and this very car park. Overlooking the car park on Alfreton Road is the Poet and Castle pub. This has been known in the past as the Clock and the Red Admiral. It has a large beer garden with good countryside views, holds a regular Thursday quiz night and has a function room upstairs. Next we're off to find the sports area which initially I thought to be via this side street, but I read my map wrong. It was this footpath I was after which crosses a field towards Codner Castle before branching off towards Goose Lane. Now on Goose Lane, here's the sports area. This is where Codner Cricket Club, which has been in existence since 1924, play. There's also three football teams, Codner FC, Codner Athletic and Codner Miners FC. Until 2007, Codner Miners Welfare Club was located here. In 2012 and 2013, it was converted into housing by Swallow Hill Homes. I've linked their Facebook page below. Now we've emerged back onto the A610 where it's become Nottingham Road. It's a right turn next past the seven almshouses. These were funded by the phrenologist Joseph Millet Seven. Born here in 1860, he authored a book entitled My Village, Ode Codner. 
Okay, so what that little amble has done has brought us around the pub and back into the village centre again. And here behind me you can see a winding wheel. Was there ever a better clue to the history of a place when it's a mining place than one of these things? We always see these in mining communities. And yes, Codner was indeed one of those. Yes indeed, Codner had mines, including High Holborn and Forty Horse, names commemorated by streets on Codner Gate Industrial Estate. Codner's wheel was installed as a mine workers memorial in 2011. The other half of it can be found at Shipley Country Park. We're at a junction now where the A610 meets the A6007, Hena Road. We're now heading back up into the marketplace. This old Wesleyan reform chapel, built in 1854, dominates the junction. Over the road is the French Horn pub. This is built on the site of Hall Farm, once owned by the Stirlands. Their name lives on thanks to the street where we began. Fun fact for you now, once upon a time you could catch trams in Codner to get to Nottingham. They were known as the Ripley Rattlers. They lasted for 20 years between 1913 and 1933, and it was the UK's most dangerous tram service, thanks to the gradients it had to deal with. Back to the landmarks, next is a small playground, just before you hit the dead centre of town, marked by the Codner Clock Tower. This was added to Codner Marketplace in 1950 at a cost of around £300, funded by the Codner, Losco and Waingroves Nursing Association. The building is nothing more than a public toilet block, but the clock was added to commemorate the association's work. It's got a parish notice board on its wall, so that's the ideal opportunity to tick Codner off that Amber Valley list. 19 to go. Okay, so now we're going to move away from Codner's really noisy main through road and explore some of the side streets. I'm here at Mill Lane Car Park, and behind that you can see a building that is Codner's Methodist Church. That's next. This Methodist Church on Mill Lane is the only active religious building in Codner Village. Over the road is the former Mill Lane School. Built by the United Methodists in 1872, this would become Codner Council Infant School. It's now the Peveril Community Centre. There were two pubs on this street. This was the Lord Byron, which is now flat. The Miner's Arms, now a house, was dead opposite. These next two streets bear the names Wright and Jessop. Wright Street is all residential, but Jessop Street has a bit more. It's named after William Jessop Jr, who we met last week. It includes this shop, which used to be another pub called the Jessop Arms. If you turn left towards the village centre, you'll pass this old schoolhouse before you come to yet another pub, the Codner Inn. This is a mid-terrace effort, which in the past has been the Amber Valley Camera Winter Ale Trail runner-up. It looks like a nice boozer. So that little trek around those side streets has brought us back to the main street briefly, so I can catch this hunts of Codner. Apparently, one of the best places to go around here for fresh hot food and they serve coffee as well and just beyond hunt there's a bit of a gap in the road as you can see here civilization kind of comes to an end but codner parish continues up that hill and you might just be able to see the pinnacles of codner's church sticking out above those trees over there we're going to catch that last it'll be the last thing that we see in Codner Parish. That's actually in a place called Cross Hill, which also falls within Codner. But of course, it's not on this main walking route because it's too far out of the village. We're going to head back north now and find the car again through some more side streets. This last section of the walk is very residential in nature, and it's also got some steep gradients to navigate. This is West Hill. Off it is a path which runs back to Jessop Street. Allotment fans, this one's for you. Codners are behind this gate right here. 
Once back to Jessup Street, we're turning the other way as we make for Field Street and yet another big hill. Field Street looks fairly flat, but trust me, it's deceivingly steep. Housing-wise, it's pretty modern. If you turn onto Thompson Drive, you can access the nearby village of Wayne Groves and its school via a path across a playing field. At the top of the hill, you're then onto Mill Lane again, at which point I turned right to head for another school, only this went a bit awry. Given the time of day, around 3pm, it was school run time, so I had to abandon filming it due to there being kids everywhere. The school in question is the only one in the village, Codner Community Primary. No matter, have some Wood Street instead. Well, if there's one thing I've personally learned about Codner, it's definitely on top of a hill. Everywhere I've walked seems to have been an uphill climb, apart from this very last section back down towards the car. It's incredible. You don't realize, do you, until you walk around a place just how hilly it actually is. Now we're going to hop into the car and head down towards Cross Hill, where there are two things left to see more than anything else. One, of course, is the church, which I mentioned earlier, and the other is the site of a railway station. This is Station Lane, the name of which is one of the very few clues that remain to the location of Cross Hill and Codner Station. It was only short-lived. It opened in 1890 and was part of the Midland Railway on its branch line between Langley Mill and Ripley. It was built mainly for colliery traffic, but from 1914 onwards, it was always in competition with the Ripley Rattlers tram service. It closed completely in 1926, and three years later, the line had been removed. The station building, though, survived until 1972. The station was sited just a few hundred yards away from Codner's Church, which stands at the end of Codner Denby Lane. Although located in Cross Hill, this is Codner's Parish Church, and it's dedicated to St James. It's a Grade 2 listed building. This is one of the smallest churches in Amber Valley and also one of the newest. It was both built and consecrated in 1844. Its chancel was added in 1890 by Holden, but the main body of the building you see here was designed by the architect Robert Barker. So why is it in Cross Hill and not actually in Codner? The answer is all to do with the village of Losco, close to Hena. In 1844, Codner and Losco were formed into a joint ecclesiastical parish, and Cross Hill is midway between them both. Rather than build two churches, it made sense, therefore, to build just one between the villages in order to save money. Our last landmark is the lit gate at the churchyard extension, and this serves as a memorial for the local men lost in World War I. To finish with, as the mid-September late afternoon sunlight started to fade, I made for the final pub within the boundaries, the Marquis Pub and Kitchen, which used to be known as the Marquis of Ormond. Not a bad way to end another day in Amber Valley. Cheers all, I'll see you for the next one in seven days time. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out